some wine, sir? I never drink wine. Ah, oh, what the hell? Let me try it. It's good. So Devil's Night has just ended. It's now the 31st of October. So I can't think of a better way to end the Halloween season by uh, doing a review on an alcoholic beverage, just happens to be. So this is really more of an excuse for me to drink than it is a review. But I still do appreciate you watching this, thank you. Now I'll get the disclaimer out of the way, you have to be 21 years or older to drink. Well that is in the United States. But if you're in one of those Eastern European countries like Romania, there's probably not a drinking age there, as far as I know. So this is a wine called Jersey Devil. Pretty cool, right? You know, Devil's Night has just ended, or Mischief Night. Forte. I don't know, I don't know what that means, and I didn't look it up. Whoops, I guess I should have looked that up before the review. Valencio? Am I saying that right? Valen... Zano, Valenzano. I'm going with Valenzano. So it's a product of them, and it's 19.5 per volume. Red wine. Wow, that's kind of that's kind of high. But I'm not complaining about that at all. Ah, the Jersey Devil, the Pine Barrens, notorious fable kind of creature, monster. Now I would just suggest going on Wikipedia if you don't know what the Jersey Devil's about by now. It's a very interesting story and there's been so many movies and shows, animation. Matter of fact, one of the most recent things, it's not recent really, but that I've seen about the Jersey Devil was an episode of Extreme Ghostbusters or Ghostbusters Extreme, but they actually go to the Pine Barrens in this one episode and it's kind of like an original twist, but you probably only like it if you were a 90s kid. And on the back, it goes on to say how there is a good tie-in between the Jersey Devil title of this wine because the fruit made for this is locally grown in New Jersey, the Garden State. Um, so that's Shemung, New Jersey. I've heard of that before, but I've never been there. Is that good or bad that I haven't been there? Now, before I review this wine, I just wanted to go over some of my past experience about the Jersey Devil. Well, you know, when I was younger. My dad had this book about the Jersey Devil, or it was about, like, the Pine Barrens and the myths about it. I would I would believe he was real, but my, I remember my dad telling us, you know, he might not be real, but there are people called the Pineys that are real. Now, if you don't know what the Pineys are, they're like, um... People that live, they actually live in the Pine Barrens in like trailers or tents or like these little like tenements. So if you thought those people in New Jersey were bad, you know, those people that have the 4x4s in their driveway with the huge Confederate flags and the motorcycles and muscle cars on the front lawn that don't work anymore. If you thought those were bad, could you imagine what those pineys are like? Anyway, when he would drive us down uh, to the shore at nighttime, like in summer for vacation, we would be on those streets that are kind of off from Route 9 or Route 9, however you want to say it. And these are before the days where oncoming traffic had like those super bright LEDs. And traffic was slow, so when my dad would go under like the pine forest or the pine barren parts, he would turn the headlights off. And even if there was a full moon in those kind of pine forests, it's complete black. It's like you put a pillow over your face. It was kind of a rush because you're there for your family, so you know you're safe. But it was also, you, I couldn't imagine how terrifying it is if you were like trapped or stuck out there. And the other story was I was down the shore and I went to into the pine forest that's not too far away from the uh, Delaware Bay area. And I took a handful of toys, G.I. Joe's with me, and I went back there and played by myself. But, you know, these were the days where kids actually, like, did stuff like that. Like, went to the woods by themselves and played with toys. And their parents, like, didn't really get too nervous. But I was there, and I was playing with my toys. And this was the daytime. Now, I didn't see anything, so don't... I'm not one of those people. But, um, 
I was playing with my toys and it was a daylight, it was a beautiful day, sunny, and I felt his presence. I couldn't get over it. It was, and it, obviously it could be in my head, all the stories, but like I felt like someone was watching me from like up in the trees. It was the weirdest thing because it was so uncomfortable, but it was so gorgeous out. So I remember I just picked up my toys, didn't look back, and walked so quickly out of there. Now, if it's true or not that he exists, that's up to speculation. Uh, I do like some of the artwork online. There's pictures of like a really authentic like throwback. Like if this thing did exist for all that time, he may look like that. And then there's ones that look comical and actually look cool, like something out of a child's head. I think this is the way most people think the Jersey Devil looks. It's mostly, it obviously has wings. It's usually a horse's head or a horse's body. Or it could be like a deer's head, a deer antlers. Or a horns, not antlers. So it can go so many ways. It blends to so many different animals that it's such an easy excuse to say that you saw the Jersey Devil because a lot of those animals exist in the in the Pine Barrens. All right, this has a cork in it. I'm gonna to try to open it now. It has the seal and the cork. Now I had to pop this cork on the ground because my back isn't the best, so I needed a leverage. So now it's, I can pop this open, I'll let it breathe for a while, and come back to it. Alright, so it's breathed a little bit, and now I'm going to go back to the five S's of wine, which are see, swirl, sniff, sip, and savor. Pervious sniff. This fence horse is. Now I did these five S's of wine too on my other wine review I did of that Filipino wine, which was really good and unique. Now I'll be using this glass, or actually, I think this might be crystal. Now Review Bra says that if it's crystal, it'll make a bell sound or a clinking sound. Okay, it's crystal. So I'll be using this so you can see the color, but then I'll be switching over to this less sophisticated plastic Halloween goblet. So it'll, it fits perfectly in with the whole New Jersey vibe. The first S is C. Ah, I love that sound. So it has... Now it has a really dark red to it, like a ruby red, a, uh, like sangria, you know, I don't know, what am I saying? It has the red wine color. Is that good enough? Now the second one is swirl. Okay, let me swirl this. Swirling it, I got both hands. I don't know if that's, uh, oh, there we go, now I'm getting a good swirl. Sniff. It smells uh, like your typical red wine, but it smells really strong, like really stronger than normal. Almost like hard alcohol. The fourth S is sip. Oh, wait, let me transfer. This is the time where I will transfer this wine to the... Uh, if anybody's still hanging in there with this wine review, good for you, thanks. But I'm going to be transferring it into a the plastic wine goblet, I said, once again, very sophisticated for New Jersey. Wait, that's the other thing about Jersey. Uh, sorry the, to uh, offshoot here, but I'll, I'll make this very brief. What is with the North and South Jersey thing? Who Who's the genius that came up with this? You're going to tell me there's no Central Jersey? There's no, like, buffer area? You've got to be out of your mind. Okay, let's be honest here. The real South Jersey, okay, is Victorian Cape May, Wildwood, Stone Harbor, Avalon, all of these places. That's the real South Jersey, okay? I just find it so hard to believe that some yokel 
in Trenton is like on the Mason Dixon line of North and South Jersey. I mean, come on, let's it's Central Jersey. Call it Central Jersey. It's right across the Delaware River from Philadelphia. All right, I'm sorry. Excuse me there. Uh, sometimes I just get riled up, man. It must be a tri-state thing. We're all so close to each other, but we're all so different in our own ways. All right, Jersey Devil, going in. Can I taste your juice? <laughs> Whoa, strong. Ooh, but sweet. Hmm. Interesting. Wow, it's interesting. It starts out really strong. But then the finish, I guess that's what you call the finish, is super sweet. It tastes really good. A real, um, almost more like berry than grape. So, I'm not sure exactly what fruit goes into this. It just says locally grown one and fr fruits and vineyards. So, <clears throat> so there's probably some berry in here, but let me try it again. Mm. Mm, yeah, wow. Awesome, I like this. I like this a lot. The smell in the first set is like hard alcohol or spirits. That's what it smells and tastes like. But at the end, it's almost like a sangria, almost sweeter. So this will, I hope this will give me some good, this will mellow me out. I hand out some uh, candy to the kids. And uh, a nice nightcap for the uh, Halloween season and the holidays. It was a it was a pretty good one. Oh boy, I'm gonna start the trail off again. Let me end this quick. So the drink out of five stars, since I did the star system, four and a half. Because first of all, wines are so similar as it is, and this one has a it's uh, local, it's unique, the uh, the bottle art's cool, but then the taste at the end is surprisingly sweet. So four and a half is, is very high, and I think a pretty accurate score for this drink. So as I always say, the drink review has ended. You may go in peace. Thank you for Thank watching. You for Please watching. subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe.